Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Verse 18, for he who in this way serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved to men. So then we pursue these things which make for peace and for the building up of one another. Now do not tear down the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are clean, but they are evil for the man who eats and gives offense. It is not good, he says, to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. Does Paul think that stumbling your brother is a bad idea? He said it to the church at Corinth. He said it to the church at Rome. But he goes on and he tells us, verse 22, The faith which you have, have as your own conviction before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts... He is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith. And whatever is not from faith is sin. If you can't do it with a clear conscience, you know what my answer is to you? Don't do it. It's not worth it. Because that clear conscience thing is a very, very healthy thing for your overall well-being. I'm talking the whole package deal here. When you do stuff against your conscience, does it, does it have an effect on your body at all? Yeah. I mean, when you're doing something you know you shouldn't do, but you do it anyway, there's like weird little biofeedback things God put into your body that you start getting a little stomach upsetness, a little, we say in Italian, agita, a little bit of heartburn, the backwash, the ulcers begin, you know, you do stuff that you can't do with a clear conscience and stuff starts trouble, your, your mind is troubled by it, you don't sleep right, you get, don't get enough sleep, you know what happens then, you get a little, like me today, and you think, man, I just, it, life doesn't look as good, I didn't get enough sleep because I don't feel well, my conscience is clear. Paul said he had a clear conscience. You know what they did? They took him outside in, uh, of the city and stoned him. Threw rocks at his head until he was dead and threw him over the wall. And then God said, get up, you're not done. And resurrected him. He had to keep going on preaching. Not a nice thing to say you have a clear conscience to some folks. They don't always like it. But the reason I have a clear conscience is because I took all of my sin and said, God, please remove it. You're the one that truly can clean my soul. And he goes, no problem. It's the guy who hangs on to his sin going, it's not sin, I'm allowed to do this. This is my favorite thing. It's my pet sin. I don't call it sin. It's just my pet thing. It's a habit. But if your habit is something that would cause your brother or sister to stumble, you need to stop that, that habit. You know, I, <clears throat> I won't ask for a show of hands because I get myself in trouble on this one, but... Paul said he would not even drink wine in Romans 14. Did you see that? I won't eat meat nor drink wine if it causes my brother to stone. Now, I got saved in 1979. It was like at the tail of the hippie commune, Jesus people revival thing was starting to happen. A lot of, a lot of um, drug addicts were getting saved. I mean, left and right. God's spirit was freeing people from their addictions. It was powerful. And a lot of those folks came from really, really heavy abuse of drugs or alcohol. And um, I grew up in an Italian house where we were allowed to have a wine, to have a toast at a wedding or any special occasion. Um, and, and to the people that, I, like, my, my best friend Troy across the street, his family, they, were, they didn't know how to just have a drink with a meal. They thought if you open the bottle, you're obligated to finish the whole thing. Because, like, there's not a cork or something that comes with it. And so they didn't know that you could close it and put it away. And it would still be okay for later, you know. It's <laughs> like everything has to be consumed completely. And then, and then 
it was a different mentality than I was brought up with. I was brought up, you could have a drink of wine, and if you were raised in a culture similar to mine, you might have the same understanding. Like, it goes, it's a compliment to the meal. It's not the meal, okay? <laughs> it's not the meal. You don't just have the bottle of wine and nothing. That's not correct. <laughs> but because I was exposed to this in my youth, Later, my parents divorced and my mom went crazy. Started drinking very heavily until she would drink and go on binges and disappear. And she had, she really struggled with this. And I saw that it, it, just, just as a youth, I, I wasn't a Christian, by the way. I made a determination before I was ever a Christian. I saw what getting drunk did. And I had never been drunk, and I determined never will I be drunk. And to this day, I've never been drunk. Doesn't mean I haven't had a drink, but I was just taught to have a drink with my food, a celebration, something special. You know, our 30th anniversary on the ship, that was really nice. They gave us a bottle of wine. We had a cork. We could close it. We saved it for the next time, you know, so I could actually spread it out and have, like, super special. Now, some people, I, I don't tell you that like to stumble anyone, but in the scripture, it is not forbidden to have a drink of wine with your meal. Did Jesus drink wine? What was his first miracle, by the way? Water, water, he, he turned water into wine. I know that some people, now this really stumbled a lot of people. In early Calvary Chapel movement, there were so many hippies getting saved, so many former drug addicts getting saved, that came out of very abusive use of wine that if I was at lunch with them or supper and they said you know the waiter would you like wine I I never order it anyway because I only drink it when it's free but <laughs> I mean that just goes against everything I believe in it's overpriced I know because we had a restaurant you know you buy the bottle cheap and you charge real high price it's crazy she seemed like such a, my son even said to me, Dad, how can people even think to go to a bar and pay like ten fifty for a little glass with a bunch of ice cubes and a smidge of alcohol? You could go buy the whole bottle. Don't they think about this? This is my 21-year-old. He's like thinking it through. That's a stupid idea. But because I grew up with this knowledge, like it's okay to have a drink, but I never thought about what if it stumbled my brother? until I was with some of the brethren that had gotten saved that came out of the alcohol, I mean heavily alcoholic past, and I realized, I'll never drink in front of you. <laughs> because No, seriously. It, it, and there's no trouble to me because I think, I care more about you than I care about having a drink any day. The drink is just something to go along with the meal. It's not, it isn't the meal. Now when it's that way that you think about having the drink, you're not freaked out that you don't have a drink. You still got your sustenance in your food. But if you're thinking, this drink is my meal, and to some of my alcoholic friends, they tell me, you don't understand, Pastor, once the bottle's open, just the smell. Just one drink. He, like, I cannot, you know, I can't even have one, they said. They go, I don't even, they would go, hats off to you, how, that you can have one drink. How do you stop? I was like, how do I stop? I only need one to go with the meal. I mean, what well, you can put a little more if you're not done with the portion or something. You know, I mean, it's not like, they're like, I can't do that. As soon as I have one, then it just triggers something. My defense comes down. i got to have another. Then it snowballs. It's like what, packing a snowball down the hill, you know, and just runs away, and it's out of control. And I tell them, look, if, the Bible says if you can't do it in faith even one drink, then what's the answer? Don't even have one. But what about, would I not have one drink if it stumbled my brother? Because that's what we're going over today. Would I care more about my brother than I care about my liberty? Yeah, I have freedom to have a drink. But not if it's going to stumble my brother. Who cares? I'll just not, I won't drink it. There's still other options, water, tea, juice, 
What if it stumbles and you have a glass of milk? No milk. I mean, seriously, people are stumbled by so many weird things today. I wish I could teach in the words of Jesus that all things are clean and it's not what goes in here that defiles you. In fact, if you wouldn't mind highlighting that verse in Mark 7 so that you can tell your friends in case they should throw in your face, oh, you shouldn't eat that, or you shouldn't eat Just say, look, it's not what goes in that defiles you. Mark 7, verses 18 and 19. If you want all the way down to 18 to 23, you can give them the words of Jesus. Because you might run into someone who's really tripped out about what goes in here instead of what comes out of here. You had not run into those folks? You need to know Mark 7, the words of Jesus. And just take them to it. You don't even have to say, what does Jesus say about this? My pastor taught about this right here. Have you read this? You know that some of the people who hold to those things and that don't even know this passage exists. It's like there's blinders on their eyes. They read right over it. And you go, um, but see, in my Bible, the translation, words of Christ in red. Notice the color right here. All red. Who's talking? Jesus. Can I count Jesus' words as authority? Is, it, is this count? It sure does. And this is, this is golden. Because this frees you. It frees you from making stupid religious excuses trying to deal with stuff on the outwardly when, like Jesus said, he looked at the, the, the religious leader said, you guys are whitewashed tombs, sepulchers. On the outside you're all clean, but inside you're full of what? Dead men's bones. Man, you got death inside you. You're like a grave. I want life inside me. And those evil thoughts, those fornications, those slanders, those envies, that foolishness, all that stuff that comes from the heart, that's the stuff Jesus wants to deal with. He doesn't care about the stuff that goes in my mouth and that goes through my stomach and out. He says, that's not, that's not the focus. But why do so many groups make that the focus? Have you ever been hit with them? They come to your door. What day do you worship on? What do you eat? It's like you guys need to read a few passages. Mark 7, Romans 14. And today, 1 Corinthians what? 8. Just maybe make a little note. Just in case. Sometimes it might help you to put a note over at Mark 7 to turn to 1 Corinthians 8. Romans 14, then flip to the other one and put the note to turn back to the other, just so you remember the three places. It, 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 your odds improve if you write it in all three spots. If you just remember where one is, that'll trigger the other spots and you'll be able to say, hey, here, read this, found this. What do you think about that? Because let's keep the focus what it is, the heart. Next week we'll come together, we'll have communion we we'll ask the Lord to make us all have clean hearts. Kick off this Christmas season with, I mean, sorry I didn't do Christmas songs today. Usually I do the first Sunday after Thanksgiving, but still in that Thanksgiving mode. I feel really grateful for the Lord, just the kindness he lets us have. Church on a beach in Hawaii. Did anyone see any whales yet? I guess we have to wait till the closing song. Maybe we can draw them in with some. They like praise music, you know? It's really cool. So I'm just praying they'll come and join us. And, and you guys, you, you know, I clearly tell you, we do not worship whales at this church. We worship, do not worship the creation, but worship what? The creator. We worship the creator. But the Bible teaches that all of his creation testifies of his handiwork. And man, when I see a whale jump, I'm from Arizona. We don't have them jumping there. We got rattlesnakes and scorpions and tumbleweeds. I mean... It's part of his creation, but it ain't as cool to me as seeing a whale. You know, black widows, scorpions, that kind of stuff. Grew up knowing all about that stuff, but I tell you, when I see a whale, I just think, Lord, that is just grand. I mean, the grandeur, the big, how big it is, it's just so cool. 
I actually got to swim with one right around the corner there. Many years ago, I was having my devotion on a rock. Swam out and a whale came up and birthed right in front of me. She gave birth and I was just blown away. Pushed her baby right up to me. I found out you cannot swim backwards with fins on. No matter how much you try, you kick, you go forward. And she kept pushing it closer and closer. And when you're staring at an eyeball of a whale through the water, you know, it, you know how the mask magnifies everything? I swear that, that eyeball looked this big in my face. And I was just like, and the baby looked huge. I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, but I think the baby was at least three or four tenths long. You know, I was just thinking, you're just born, but you're big. You know, you're just huge. And you just, wow. To see his handiwork, you just, it just makes me just marvel. What a great, I mean, look at this, guys. It, just a sailboat going by, you know. Nice, peaceful day. Just beautiful sky. The Lord's handiwork around us. I mean, how blessed are we? We get to worship the Lord in a sanctuary like this. You know, if Jesus was here today, I've had people come from other churches say, I think he'd be here preaching. It's better than any building. I said, Amen. This is our building, right? And you are a building for his spirit. So I pray now that the Holy Spirit would fill each of you with all that you need from his spirit, your, his comfort, his guidance, his mercy and love to overflowing. May you be filled with words of grace that would fall from your lips to those that you will come in contact with this week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he supply all that you need as you go from here today. By the power of his Holy Ghost, I pray it in Jesus' name. Everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? I'd like to sing a song. It's the last one on your song sheet. It's Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.